we must give our attention to all the things we learn so that we don't drift away. I have told you that it's possible to drift. It's possible to move away from Christ. It's possible to be a Christian and backslide. But in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1, we know that the solution to stay strong in Christ is to pay full attention to the things we are hearing. We are in a generation where people are in church and they are looking at their phones. We are in a generation where a sermon or a preaching or message is going on and people are drafting text messages. Do you think that's right? I don't think so. Because God expects us to respect His presence. God expects us to concentrate and pay maximum attention. But beyond the attention you pay in church, there's another level of attention that you pay when you are on your own. When you see a Christian who is mature, who is doing well, that is not a product of church alone. You need to go back home and behave like a real Christian. Read the passages again, the pray them into your life, and then those things are the established in your life. The first principle in that passage is repentance from dead works. Repentance from dead works. I believe many people, when they are reading this passage, will just assume that it's the same thing as repentance from sin. No. Repentance from dead work is beyond repentance from sin. Can somebody please read Hebrews 9 14? Hebrews 9 14. How much more? Dead works is mentioned two times in the New Testament. The first time is this Hebrews uh, chapter 6, where it talks about principles or doctrines of Christ. And the first one is repentance from dead work. So I decided to check that book again. Where else do we see repentance from dead works? And I found it in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. And it says that our conscience should be purged. Their conscience will be purged by the blood of Jesus from works that lead to death. So, if you read the Bible very well, you realize that the works that lead to death are not seen alone, or works that cannot be regarded as alive is not just seen, but it also includes legalistic kind of work. And that's what these people were trying to get back into. When they were under the old covenant in the religion called Judaism, they were required to obey certain laws. They were required to be obeying the laws. And that was what God needed from them at that time. But when God sent Jesus Christ, did God say, I don't want the blood of bulls and goats anymore? All I require is the blood of Jesus. And that blood is sufficient. To cleanse our conscience, to cleanse us from dead works, to cleanse every dead thing in our lives. But these people were trying to go back into keeping the law. And God is saying, What I require from you now is not keeping the law. What I require from you is to believe in Jesus Christ and accept that the offering that He made once and for all is sufficient for you. The offering that Jesus Christ made by shedding his blood, that offering is enough. That is the only thing that can make you to be clean, to be holy, to be righteous, to be acceptable by God. It's not your effort. Are you with me? So the fact that you go to church, you pray, you read the Bible, those are not the things that make you acceptable to God. What makes you acceptable to God is the blood of Jesus. So when God sees the blood of Jesus, He regards you as holy. When God sees the blood of Jesus, He regards you as holy. As far as God is concerned, you are holy. You are acceptable. You are acceptable to Him. You don't need to strive and try, okay, maybe if I don't wear any, then I'll be more acceptable to God. If I don't wear this, For you as a person, maybe you need that strategy for 
for you to consecrate yourself more to God, between you and your God. But those are not the things that make you acceptable to God. Things that may look good, but they are not necessarily what will save you. Those things can be regarded as dead works if you are relying on them for your salvation. So it's possible that somebody is born again, but after you became born again, you do not really understand the fact that it's the blood of Jesus that qualifies you. And then you feel that, oh, if I can just pray for one more hour, maybe if I can pray for four hours in a day, if I can do this, if I can do that, then God will now accept me more. That will be a dead work. Because the Bible says our righteousness can never, there's no amount of righteousness we have. Our highest level of righteousness is like filthy rag before God. Do you know what that filthy rag is? The word that was translated to filthy in that passage is something that smells like the blood from menstruation. That kind of smell. You know, when a lady has just has menstruated and maybe kept the part somewhere for some time, it smells awful. That's what is referred to as filthy in that passage. As if filthy was not enough, now talks about rag, filthy rag. That means this the rag now even makes it worse. Rag is something old, something that is not acceptable, it's dirty. You use it to clean the floor, and then somebody now uses maybe washes that rag, and now use it to menstruate. You know, some people still use rag. I believe there's nobody like that in the church. And somebody that only uses that rag as part and let the blood take the rag in one corner. You know it will smell awful. The Bible says your righteousness, the highest level of your righteousness, that's the way it appears to God, like soil sanitary towel. Has been left one corner for some days. As how is the witness is like that soil of sanitary power in the presence of God. That means there's no point trying. There's no point trying. We can never please God from our own effort. So what God expects us to do is to repent from those dead works. To change our mind that we will no longer try please God by ourselves. To change our mind that we will accept what Christ has done and always lay hold of what Christ has done. You see, what I'm teaching you, does this sound very simple? I want us to say answer. Does this sound very simple? It doesn't sound very simple. But do you know that this is the first fundamental truth that you need to understand very well as a child of God. Unfortunately, there are many Christians in our days who go to the world. God doesn't want your dead works. God doesn't want your efforts. What He wants is for you to come and say, I'm not able. I don't have any righteousness of God. I, I accept Christ and His righteousness. I accept what Christ has done and I'm holding on to Christ. If maybe you are my friend and I like you very much, but there's somebody who has offended me, and that person was now transferring 10,000, 10,000 to my account, thinking that if I can just transfer one million, I think one million is the number for today, if I can just transfer one million to doctor's account, then she should be pleased with me. But my own standard is that if you can come to the other, then you are fine. If you can just come, just stay behind the other and the other comes and say, Don't go, please forgive her, please don't. I'll say, Oh, the other comes, okay, you are good. You are good, 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 good. But that person stays in one corner and says, I'm very rich. I'm saying more, I'm saying another one to her. She will have no choice but to accept me, but that's not my criteria. So God is saying, His criteria is not to try by your own effort to be crediting your account with good works. You get it. All I need from you is come to Biola. All I need from you is come to Jesus. All I need from you is accept Jesus. Period. Unfortunately, the day we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, many of us do not even understand what we were doing that day. Just come out to 
came out to pray and you continue with your own way of life and your thoughts pattern, your paradigm, your, your ways, your attitude, you just continued because you did not understand what happened to you. But suppose that person, maybe the person is promised, promised and come be and said, Sister Bella, let me go for you to go and move your God. You came through your life as all. Oh, are forgiven, I accept you. As from today, you are only everything about all the things you did before. Then, will he go back to continue to offend him? Will it be right for him to continue to do what he did before? Mm. So the difference is that our good works cannot make up for what we have done. All we need is to come through Jesus. But after we have come through Jesus, we're supposed to desist from sin. So what that was is moral, depending on morals, keeping the law of Moses in a realistic manner as if they can save you. Allowing keeping commandments to make you feel qualified. That is dead work. Something that God is offering by grace. Allowing yourself to do some things to think you can qualify for it. That is dead work. Does not does that now law of one man's history? No. Keeping the law of God or the word of God is essential as long as you are not concerned or concentrating on the law and sin and sin. Keeping the law is essential but the method through which God wants us to keep the word or the law is different. Christians are supposed to keep the law by working and you say that I, as a Christian, am supposed to keep the word of God by walking in the Spirit. That's why we read Galatians chapter 5 earlier on. Galatians chapter 5. If you look at that passage again, we say that Galatians chapter 5, verse 6 For in Christ Jesus, Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith walking through love. So what God wants in this dispensation is faith that is walking through love. What God wants is for us to be walking in the Spirit and be bearing the fruit of the Spirit. It's possible for you to keep the law and say, ah, today, today is tomorrow is Sabbath. I'm keeping the law of the Sabbath. And you are still fighting with your friends. They are not working in love. They are not working in sin. So keeping that Sabbath or Sunday or whatever in your mind is useless. Do you understand? So what God is more concerned about in our own generation now is to be working in the spirit, not depending on their works. If you have repented indeed, then there should be fruits for your life. Remember that when John was preaching in the wilderness and the Pharisees and those teachers of the law came to him. What did John say? He said, you brood of vipers, who has warned you? He said, you better bear fruit that feeds righteousness. You better bear fruit that feeds righteousness. That means if you say you are repented from your sin, which is part of their laws, and you are repented from keeping the law in a legalistic manner, which is another dead law, then you should bear fruit that feeds righteousness. If you say you are now in Christ and Christ is righteous, you should bear fruits that fit. And somebody give us examples of such fruits. You should bear fruits that fit righteousness. Anything that is done in the spirit that can lead to love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, gentleness or meekness towards God. These are the kind of fruit that God expects to see in our lives. It's not wash your hands before you eat. Not all those things that the Pharisees were doing. You know they would wash their hands to reach the ankle before they felt before they would feel good. Do you think that's more important to God than you be I and mean, loving your neighbor? That's what Jesus was telling them. That it's not just enough for you to say uh, you have washed outside. You should be more concerned about.
about your insight. Then what also you want anything done in the flesh, anything not inspired by the Holy Spirit. God is alive and is right inside of you. If you are born again, God is inside you. And God expects you to be related with him. He doesn't want you to be serving him as if you dead God. Some people will just say, hey, this is what they read in the Bible. They are doing it without listening to the Holy Spirit inside them. Meanwhile, the Holy Spirit is inside you. So acts that are also done without joy, love, or with complaints can be regarded as dead works. Do you agree with me? Suppose you give money to God and you are giving it with complaint in your heart. God will not answer. That's why in the first and nobody forces anybody to give anything. Nobody will force you to give anything. Because anything you do, the Bible says, God, God loves a cheerful giver. He didn't say give out money. So anytime you hear give, it's not only money. Even if you decided that you want to participate in a fashion manner, maybe in the choir or part of the prayer group or usher, and you are doing it reluctant, you just want to do it so that they will know that you are doing something. You are not doing it cheerfully. You are not doing it from your spirit. It's a dead work to not be accepted by God. Whatever happens before the start, before you start the journey before you accept Christ into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. That thing will not count. That work will not count. But anything you do after will count. Does somebody understand what I'm saying? If you are not born again, you never give your life to Christ. No particular day that you surrender to Jesus. But you go to church, you read Bible, you do all sorts of things. You even give millions. They won't count. You know why they won't count? Because the first criteria before you are ushered into heaven is have you accepted Christ as your heaven? So if you've not accepted Christ as your can you receive the word you get in heaven? You can. So what qualifies you to enter heaven is you believe in Christ. You've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. Come inside. So when we get to heaven, those who have entered, God will now check. The records will be checked. The day you gave 1,000 in church is recorded. You will receive the reward for it. The day somebody was sorrowful and you smiled and you checked that off, it's written, you will receive a reward for it. So if we are not going to concentrate on dead works, if we are not going to spend our time on dead works, then that means we should move on to good works. We should move on to living works, which the Bible referred to as good works. If you repent, then you must bear fruit worthy of repentance. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, the Bible says, We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So don't say that the days of keeping the laws are over. I don't know why Christians are always finding it difficult to stay in the middle of the road. Some people will be at one extreme. They want to be keeping the law as if we can save them. No, we are saved by Jesus. But after we be saved by Jesus, we need to now give ourselves to walk in the spirit and produce good fruits. Some other people will go to the other extreme and they will say, whatever they do doesn't matter. There is no sin in Christ Jesus. And they will be doing bad things and be saying that the place of God covers, do you agree with them? They don't. Hallelujah. The Bible says we are Ephesians 2 10. We are the workman, we are the handwork of God. God created us, He fashioned us in Christ Jesus unto good works. So when God was creating you in Christ Jesus, when He made you a new creation in Christ Jesus, in His mind, He was creating you to go and be doing good works. And the Bible says in Ephesians 5 1 that we should be imitators of God as dear children. So if we are supposed to be imitators of God, then we cannot be following the works of the devil. Does somebody understand what I'm saying? How can you then bear fruit, meet for repentance, without being legalistic? I think that should be the question of our mind. Yes, God doesn't want us to be legalistic, but he wants us to bear good works. So how do we do it? And the answer is in that 
Galatians chapter 5. The answer is there. If you follow that passage while we were reading, verse 13, Galatians 5 13. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. You see love coming up again. So that's why Jesus Christ said the law summarized into two. The whole law can be summarized into two. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That means if you understand love and you walk in love and walk in the spirit, you will just be keeping the law unconsciously. You'll be keep, if, you want, if I want to walk in love towards you, I won't hate you. I won't do anything wrong against you. I will not take your name, but I will not take your wife if I'm a man. I will not take your husband if I'm a woman. I will not lie against you. So you find that, that when you walk in love, those laws written in the Old Testament, because you are walking in the Spirit, you will just be fulfilling those laws. Those laws will be you'll be doing them, even you'll be doing, you'll be going beyond them. For example, a law says you shall not kill, you shall not kill. You should not kill your neighbor, you should not kill anybody. That's a law, right? So if somebody says, I, I want to keep this law, this is the law I want to keep, I will not kill. But you now talk against your brother and say, ah, that my brother is a thing for in fact, it's most so, 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 so that you did, and you are now speaking against another Christian. I will not kill the person. You have killed the person. So you are supposed to repent. But if you are walking in the spirit, in fact, the moment you want to start talking, the Spirit will be checking you that this thing you want to say is, is, is against, is against the Lord. The Spirit will be checking you, and you will know that what you want to say. Is not really good. Works of the flesh are obvious in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. Can somebody read them? The works of the flesh that we should not allow in our lives. Okay, well, thank you. We've even read them before, and I'm sure many of us are conversant to them. So those are the things you should watch against, and the fruits produced by the Holy Spirit. In other words, if we get into the Spirit and walk in the Spirit, there are certain things that would show in our life. There are certain things that will be manifesting in our life, and that means our major responsibility should be to get filled with the Spirit all the time. You know how you feel when you are just doing fasting and praying, maybe for one day or for three days. Even if somebody wants to offend you, you just feel, Look, don't come and spoil my fast. Or maybe when you are still fasting, you don't want anything to stain you. So if you are, that's how you feel when you are, when you are filled with the Spirit. So at such a time, to just comply with things that will make you to produce the fruit of the Spirit. This is the most important foundation teaching of Jesus. If you follow this teaching, then you are his disciple. Please be careful of not condemning yourself. That's the last thing I'm going to say on repentance. Many of us are very sin conscious and we are not conscious of what Jesus has done. We need to be more conscious of what Jesus has done. So that when time you make a mistake, you just come back to God and say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Please forgive me. I believe Jesus is speaking on my behalf. And immediately leave that situation and continue with your Christian journey. But the devil will want to harass you. He wants to accuse you that ah, you've done something terrible. Ah, God is against you. There is, you can't come back to God. He would want to harass you. With this teaching today, you know that what makes you acceptable to God is not your efforts. What makes you acceptable to God is 
Jesus Christ. So as far as God is concerned, you are the one that walked the way when you made the mistake. As soon as you realize the mistake and come back to God, God is ready to accept you. Is that point clear? I want us to pray on that point. Because many Christians are of different aspects. Whatever you understand, I want you to just pray on that point. What the little you have understood. And say, God, help me to always depend on what I can.